Welcome to Gender Meowster Podcast Network. Genderful is a talk show featuring non-binary and trans folks discussing various topics and special interests. We kindly remind our listeners that no person is a monolith of identities. All opinions are the speaker's own. This show airs live on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash gender meowster and VODs with show notes can also be found on YouTube. Howdy, folks. Ooh, are my captions going? Yeah, they are. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. I'm so glad you're here. Um, a couple of um, things to say here at the start. So this is Genderful Episode 7 and 8. Uh, we are recording two podcast episodes in one stream tonight because we have some lovely guests and a lot of really interesting and exciting content to discuss. Um, and uh, we're so today we're talking about plurality and gender, which is a huge topic because when you have plural beings, there are multiple. Um, so for I just want to say some content warnings right here at the start um, I of course don't know exactly where we're we're going to go with some of this but um, possible content warnings include childhood trauma um, I'm reading the wrong list where's the updated one um, and this is this is like mentions of um and as a side note, we're trying to save some of the heavier stuff for the, the latter half of the evening, which will be the second episode, the second podcast episode. Um, so uh, there will be a break halfway through at about, let's see, it's 7.20 Pacific now. So at about 8.30, 8.45 Pacific, we're going to take a break. Um, so, but here's the possible content warnings. Discussion of childhood trauma, sexuality, mental health and PTSD, transphobia, homophobia, ableism, light references to kink, possible references to suicidal ideation and self-harm, and a car accident or car crash. And um, the moderators will be, not only will the timers be periodically posting that information in chat, um, but we will also be, um, we can we can throw that command out anytime we get new people in. So mods, anytime we get raided, please let folks know um, with that exclamation point CW for content warning. This is an ask me anything stream. And so any questions you have, you can put in the chat. I will let you know though, we do have two and a half pages of questions already. So no promises that we'll get to your questions, but this will be a very enriching discussion, I feel. Um, let me just make sure and check in with my guests, make sure that they are ready. me to switch over but yeah I'm really glad everyone's here thank you so much for for showing up oh the, the, there's an, an important other piece of tonight that we're doing um, maybe we can do a thumbs up uh, uh, are you ready thumbs up thumbs up I'm missing one thumbs up awesome Looks good. Okay, we're gonna switch over, and I'm going to undeafen. That's that's. Hello, everyone. The idea. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Um, well, welcome to the stream. Um, I'm Gender Meowster, and our conversation today is gender and plurality. Whoa. Very exciting. That's right. Um, so not only are we discussing this topic tonight, but I also want to let folks know that this is simultaneously a trans crowdfund event. Um, we, one of our guests, L, who's here, hello, um, is currently um, raising funds with, with our many communities um, for, um, I would, it, you, you've been saying feminization surgery, right? Not gender confirmation surgery. Yeah, I mean, honestly, either one is fine. It was sort of a slight catch-all since the sort of lowest tier we're hoping for was a breast augmentation, but that if we managed to raise enough, the ideal was to 
but fully do FFS, uh, facial feminization surgery, mm -hmm. which happens to be a lot more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we we were thrilled with the news today that you've already hit the first goal, which was, was it 8,500 US? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the new goal is, is it 1,300, 13,000 or 13,500? Uh, it's 13,000 right now. And yeah, I was bored to see it get there while I was asleep. Um, Yanlin <laughs> told me when I woke up and yeah. <laughs> I love that so much. So some context for my community. So L, who's here with us, um, all of all of the the people here are some flavor of plural. And I'll let people do bios and intros in a minute here. But L has been supporting the gender master community from the very beginning in a very sort of... Uh, Un underappreciated and unknown way, L has been um, one of the main admins of the Discord community and has taught a lot of us most of what we know. And so um, it's true, L has totally been fabulous this whole time. And so when I got the, the message um, a couple, maybe two weeks ago now, to um, that there was this effort, this community effort going on um, to raise funds for some gender confirmation related surgery stuff. I was like, oh, heck yeah. And so um, that is how this stream was born. And so um, Elle had some great other guests to invite and I will let the rest of you introduce yourselves now. Why don't we go um, left to right, top to bottom. So we'll have Elle go first and then Ian Lane and then Prismatic System. Uh, sure. Um, I'm Elle, I am one member of sorts of our system. Um, we're technically like a two person system made up of M and Liz. And a little bit more recently, we, uh, in a way that we'll explain more later, did a, a blend of sorts. If you've watched, I don't know, uh, Steven Universe, you can think of it a little bit like Garnet, where M and Liz sort of blend together to make something that's more than the sum of either of our parts, L. So in that sense, they're sort of like a two and a half headmate system. Um, we are all trans feminine. Um, M uses she, her. Liz uses she, it. And I use uh, she, they, and it. Awesome. And I'm passing it on. Great, thank you so much. Next we have Ian Lane. Hi. Um. Yeah, uh, I'm Ian, and my headmate is Lane. Uh, we've had a kind of a weird road into figuring out we were plural, um, sort of tied in with uh, our transition and a lot of changes in our life. But uh, I'm somewhere in the sort of like um, non-binary, um, agender, gender fluid sort of region myself and my headmate is uh, much more trans feminine. Um, I use they and sometimes it pronouns and uh, Lane uses she uh, and sometimes they for pronouns. Awesome. Super great. Um, okay, next we have the Prismatic System. Hello, everyone. Hi. Um, so I am Holly Mist, and I use she pronouns and they pronouns. Um, I have two headmates, uh, Alexia and M. Uh, M spelt like the HTML tag, so emphasis, I guess, but like I only really call her that as a joke. Uh, she doesn't call herself that. Um, and M uses she, they as well, and uh, Alexia uses she, her. Um, and you may see them later on in the stream if they decide to front. Yes, Aaron Poop Rat Cat, that is exactly how it is spelled. <laughs> Correct. Um, yeah, so that's 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 our pronouns. 
That's wonderful. Um, and for Thanks. those who are visiting from your various communities who haven't met me yet, um, my internet handle is Gender Meowster. I use they, them pronouns. I'm a variety streamer here on Twitch. I do a lot of comfy, cozy things. I'm a non-binary person. I'm a disabled person. I'm a neurodivergent person. And who knows what other identities I might hold. I, I seem to hold a multitude of identities, so we'll find out. i got to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I also uh, <laughs> am part of the disability community. Uh, I have uh, chronic pain and chronic fatigue, mm -hmm. and um, some hearing issues as well. So, yeah, power mm -hmm. power to you for uh, for putting yourself out there so regularly and talking about this sort of stuff. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. Well, I'm really delighted to have all of you here. Um, Thank you so much for coming and visiting my my little my little corner of the internets. Um so in I feel like the the next question that I have, it says tell us a little about yourself, but that's the whole stream. So maybe we skip that and go to the next one, which is how long have you been thinking about plurality with regards to yourself? We could start there or we could start with some basic definitions. Do you all have a preference? I would say definitions might be a better way to go first so that cool. the when we talk about ourselves it'll it'll make more sense that sounds awesome i'm gonna move this chunk of things over here so um and every person doesn't have to answer every question and i know the the three of you slash more than three of you um to my impression know each other fairly well so you may have a sense of who might have a great answer to share um so the first question I have is is pretty basic. What is plurality for those who are showing up who have never have never heard of this or have only barely lightly heard of this? What what is this concept of plurality? Uh, plurality can be thought of as multiple people, headmates, um, coexisting in one body, in one brain, one noggin. Um, I think that's sort of the most basic definition. I think that uh, for plurality, like the catch-all definition is basically the the uh, classic, yeah, you know, multiple multiple personalities, one body sort of thing. But um, there is so much variety in 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 plurality and what it is and what uh, people perceive it to be for themselves and uh for others and like it's I, I think you could also see it potentially as 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 uh facets of personality uh especially some median systems which we can go into later on uh would potentially perceive it as that uh you could you could you could perceive it in uh so many different ways and um that is that is one of the great things about plurality is that uh yourself yourselves you and your headmates uh however however you want to refer to them however you want to refer to yourself like some people prefer to think it of, of it as like it's it's all part of you so that makes them you and some people prefer to think that Okay, these are these are um my headmates and they are separate from me but we share the same body and both of those are equally valid and um yeah there's so many so many interpretations out there uh and yeah it's awesome. tricky because uh like you know you you're trying to describe and or like put a a lens over what's going on inside your own head your own psyche and that's always going to be a little a little tough to try to nail down and define um mm. Mm. I mean, for me it's very much been a extremely useful way to view inconsistencies and um things about myself ourselves that have like always been with us and um that there are other ways that we could have viewed that but this particular lens 
um, ha having this way to frame it has been really useful and fit a lot better than anything else we've tried. Mm -hmm. um, I've just remembered one thing I forgot to say at the beginning. I usually say this in the podcast intro, but I didn't say it live for our guests. And that is um, each person is speaking from their own identity, perspective, and experience. No one person is a monolith of their entire identity, which is part of why I have this entire genderful talk show, because I want us to think about gender and hear from as many gender diverse people as possible so that we don't have one person's answer on what gender is and what, what all of these things within the category of gender mean. So similarly, no one Certainly. plural person can speak for all plural people or systems rather, excuse me, not all, not one plural, no one plural system can speak for all plural systems. And so um, please take everyone's input as their personally informed opinion and perspective. Awesome. Thank you. That's yeah. very much true. And whether it's plurality or being on the spectrum or ADHD or so many other things, I sometimes when it's useful have sought diagnoses, but generally speaking, I see them as frameworks to work within. And if when applied, they seem to work and function and make my life and ability to function better using that framework of coping mechanisms, then I stick with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. I think frameworks are going to come up a lot tonight. They have in my thinking about all of this ahead of time. <laughs> For um, sure. So just to just to touch on some of the other basic definitions, you all have mentioned headmates, but if you were to try and give like a one sentence or a, a brief description of headmate, what is a headmate? Um, so some people call them headmates, some people call them altars, some people call them guests. Uh, there's all sorts of different names, again, for this, this phenomena. But um, the, uh, the general thinking on headmate is, um, it's like a, sort of a similar word to classmate, someone who shares a class with you, someone who shares a head with you, you know. So my headmates are... Uh, M and Alexia and um, headmate is something that some people definitely think of as the preferred term right now at this time in um, plurality's sort of social existence uh, but there's definitely people who still very much prefer alter and will get offended if people say headmate and then there's lots of people who will get offended if people say alter. So it's it's like you said, no one's a monolith. Uh, but, you know, just generally another personality or facet thereof is, is what I would say that is. Awesome. My next question is, what is a system? So a system generally um, is... It's a word we use for the complete sort of being. Um, it's kind of tempting to go back to using the word person again and again, but it's um, that that's sort of the problem in the first place. Um, so, yeah, if I'm a person, a headmate, um, then all of us within this body grouped together would be the system and um, sometimes you know people have a name to refer to themselves as a system and that's not always the case um, especially for headmates who are extremely distinct they might prefer not to group themselves that way okay uh, next question I have on the definition topic is what is fronting um before we move to that sure. uh, would it be all right if I say a couple more words about systems yeah totally totally fine okay um so a, a system like we, we were talking about frameworks before about like you know for mentality for managing things for um and 
a system is uh it's 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 a group of 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 things is is generally what a system is that has some sort of function that's 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 uh yeah not the uh not the entire uh definition of system uh but like yeah a set of things working together as parts of a mechanism or an interconnecting network a complex whole like the state railway system or an organization uh or or uh, a, a school or something like we we would say the school system uh things like that and um so yeah it's 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 uh the collective whole of something and in this case some people uh as Annette hello said uh would refer to that as the body because they would see the body as the thing that contains the collective whole uh and some people very much wouldn't some people some people would completely see that otherwise uh <laughs> so it's 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 a little bit hard to pin it down absolutely uh exactly but um yeah that's that's what i would say is an important thing to think about when when you're defining what a system is the you know larger definition as well as the more specific terminology mm -hmm. does anyone else want to talk about systems before we move on i did have something but i actually think it'll fit better with another question i'd say go ahead okay so my next question is what is fronting so we have headmates we have systems but then what is this concept of fronting it can to some degree mean something different for different systems but generally speaking fronting is when you as a headmate are the one that is in front, you have control of the body, so to speak. Um, there are concepts such as co-fronting or blending. Um, co-fronting is sort of what it sounds like. Um, it's more than one headmate fronting at the same time in some sort of configuration. Um, for some systems or in some situations, this can mean Maybe you're sharing control of everything. It can mean one system, I'm sorry, one headmate uh, has control and another sort of like looking in sort of, I've heard an analogy of the person fronting has the wheel and someone co-fronting maybe is sitting in the passenger seat and everyone that is not any of those things, if it's say like a limousine, maybe is like behind the window, the separator. Um, Maybe with co-fronting, someone's talking, another person's uh, moving the, you know, moving the body, whatever, whatever it may be. For us, it tends to be pretty, I, I don't know, clear and stable. Um, whoever's fronting is doing everything. Um, but going back to blending, that's sort of what I am. Uh, you meaning L? Yeah, exactly. Um, we have that state of I'm fronting or of Liz fronting. Mm -hmm. And then we have that switch, as I said, is a, a much more recent development, that sort of Garnet-esque thing, or I don't know, like Dragon Ball Z, you can think of that type of fusion where I am made up of Emma and Liz, but also something more than either of them alone, um, which it, it does bring me to one other, other thing uh, the concept of median systems that I know we were going to get to. Um, I'm sure that both Harley and Ian or their headmates will have more to say on all of this, but they sort of feel associated to me. Um, in terms of plurality, as Harley had said earlier, there's as many ways to be plural as there are plural systems, but there's a lot of commonalities and trends and there is the framework. So if you sort of think of it as a spectrum in this case, or maybe on one end, you've got someone that is not plural, uh, a singlet. And on the other end, you've got what 
may often be more characterized or referred to as as DID, basically. Um, much more completely separate, distinct, maybe sometimes with memory barriers, sometimes without. Uh, maybe systems where not everyone or none of the headmates are sort of uh, fully formed holes, but sort of fragments that might form together. Um, between those sort of more in the middle, you've got median systems. Mm -hmm. And even that is a spectrum in itself, wherein when we are in the form of being M or Liz, we're sort of more on the plural, more, the more plural end of that, that line, where very distinct, uh, even with a very like strong, large shared base, um, speaking style and disposition um, those sorts of things being much more disparate even if our we have no memory gaps anything like that um, everything else is, is pretty fluid as we're when we do blend into the way that we are now L um, we're sort of more toward the singlet side of median where uh, in a way that we'll probably get into more soon or later um, it's a little bit more like I, L, am the self, and I can lean into, sort of fluidly, Emma Liz, sort of a facet, code switching, more more of that sort of thing, um, rather than, than feeling something more disparate. It's almost like, I sometimes refer to this form as like quasi-singlet. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I'm sure there's more to say, but I'm going to give this over to someone else. It's an interesting contrast. Uh, to our system where like we we can all front at the same time um sort of like in it hello in the chat there mentioned that their partner's plurality expresses itself outwardly as a council of plurals and they generally present a composite of their headmates uh we can do that and actually often will for important decisions but we don't blend quite like uh L system does like it kind of hurts for us to, to, to all be sort of compressed into that space and the, the conflicting responses that we're all trying to give uh, because at that point we all sort of have access to control of our body but if there's multiple people trying to control the body at the same time uh, that can have pretty weird results uh, and uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of like when you're trying to run too many programs on the same computer. Oh, your pronouns are he, him. I see. I, uh, don't actually have the pronoun app thing at the moment, so I can't see whose people's pronouns are, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, um, yeah, so so it's it's like I said, it's an, an interesting contrast to uh L's system who have a much more sort of natural merge where where it's not so much a fight to get things done as a uh yeah. And I I think that uh Ian Lane have have a bit of that sort of thing, uh if they want to talk about that. Otherwise, I'll move on to other things. Yeah, so um, we we're pretty distinct from each other. There's like there there's a shared base of experience to some extent, but um, in in a lot of ways, we act quite differently. Um, we have different like. interests and goals, um, things we enjoy to some extent, uh, and we've been noticing more and more over the last um, six months or so um, that we don't always have access to um, the, the memories of when we weren't fronting. Um, which has actually helped to uh, helped a lot to sort of explain and um, deal with 
times when before we just sort of thought, well, oh, we're forgetful in, in ways that are really unhelpful. Like someone would say, oh, well, remember we talked about this? And it's like, well, no, I don't remember that <laughs> at all. Um, and it was just like, okay, well, maybe that's an ADHD thing. Maybe it's a um, just just forgetful or something. But it lines up really well with uh, times when uh, the other headmate was fronting um, that we'll have gaps. Um, so then we can say, like, oh, no, like, that time... Um, when you said we talked about this, like I wasn't fronting, like we tried to, we we actually um have a a spreadsheet for keeping track that uh L and her headmates put together, yes. and um yeah, and it's been pretty consistent that our gaps in memory are times when. Yeah, the headmoot was fronting. Um, we've got a little bit of experience of, of some amount of blending where, like, we'll get into sort of a a middle state where we notice, like, the other headmates' mannerisms or maybe some thoughts edging in. Um, but it tends to be sort of more close to how people usually describe or in in my experience people have described uh, co-running to me where there's both of us active in different capacity rather than um, the kind of like singlet like blend that I was describing um, so in in terms of our system, and memory loss and um i guess i'll i'll define singlet while we're here because that's a a pretty common term right now singlet isn't a single person it's sort of like cis but for whether you only have the one personality versus whether you're okay with your assigned gender um so it's it's, it's definitely not meant to be an offensive term at all it's it's just a a descriptor um yeah or like holistic versus autistic um so me memory stuff uh, uh we <laughs> we actually almost realized that we were plural back in uh 2013 because um we were talking to our girlfriend at the time and said we have access to different memories when we're in different moods and at the time we thought that we were bipolar because there was such an obvious contrast in the way we acted and like obviously in popular uh literature and um movies and things like that what bipolar looked like to us at the time it looked like what we were experiencing but Obviously, if we'd captured that thought of different access to memories and different moods and the acting very differently and things, uh, we could have probably picked up on that a lot sooner. But um, yeah, for us, it's sort of if a headmate is paying attention to what's going on, like, for example, I'm talking, I'm Harley, but back there, um, my headmates, M and Alexia, uh, and more than Alexia right now, are both paying attention to what I'm doing. So they would have memories of this, if perhaps foggier than if they'd been controlling the body and actually interacting and stuff. Although I think that bit is more a function of ADHD than uh, <laughs> plurality in general uh, for us, because uh, it, yeah, sort of interacts in that way for us. Um, but um we we if 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 we're not paying attention we don't get the memory and now that we are aware we are plural we're all a lot better about paying attention to important things so that we remember them together later but otherwise for example some of us can go to sleep and then one of the other headmates like might wake up in the middle of the night and do some things and we wouldn't know if we were still asleep you know 
it's it's uh <laughs> it can be a bit confusing uh and never mind the whole if you have different access to different memories and people don't know that you're plural and uh friends with a member of your system that can that can be uh difficult to navigate because sometimes they they sort of perceive that you're off somehow even if they don't know how they don't they don't like you as much uh or maybe they'd like you more and and it's sort of uh yeah it's it's interesting that way so i have three directions we could go which i also i'm pretty sure i'm self-diagnosed as adhd <laughs> i think this will just keep happening and it's wonderful so one ian could weigh in on the question what is a singlet two all all three systems could discuss um sort of this concept of headspaces and what it feels like to not be fronting so we've talked about fronting two questions ago so then the inverse of not fronting and kind of exploring that a little or three adhd and plurality which also could just be a later topic we talk about after definitions so where would you all like to go next ian would you like a, a crack at what is a singlet or do you feel complete on that topic i feel like carly did a great job of that it's uh it's very much the um the sort of like cis is as to trans like as singlet is to um plural the you could describe it as a system with one headmate okay that's cool. a really good description like a system with one headmate yeah because it, it is that, like I was saying earlier, with the definition of system, you know, uh, there's definitely schools of thought in, in psychology and neurology that uh, the mind might be composed out of many smaller sort of microcosmic personalities that work together to form a larger whole. Um, not that that's everyone's accepted thought in, in the scientific realm, but like, you know, there, yeah, I just thought it was interesting given what Ian said there. Yeah. Um I have a a friend whose uh therapist is um their local expert on um her local expert on uh dissociative identities and she was kind enough to forward on her therapist's um uh, explanation to me and it was probably more complicated than I can go over um, in like voice chat for the stream but um, it effectively kind of framed a like the mind in general as a sort of collection of, of modules that the sort of expected way it to function would be that the modules all kind of like are somewhat connected with none of them being dominant and in a plural system you have um, like some of the modules edging to the front and taking more control and some of them drifting out and being completely disconnected from the group um, and so yeah under that framing um, you could potentially say that like oh you know everyone's potentially plural but yeah, it's, not operating that way it's definitely interesting because some of that research also goes into for example um the interactions with various uh traumatic brain injuries and things like that and how that can disrupt this hypothetical system and be responsible for some of the personality changes that some people see given that and uh yeah i i definitely think it's an interesting way to look at things there's obviously no way to be sure that it's the uh you know air quotes correct way because there's so much unknown about the human brain uh and in fact brains in general like 
I don't think it's that there's more unknown about the human brain than there is about various other beings. Uh, it's just that our ethical constraints <laughs> allow us more access to the brains of those uh, other beings. Which, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. And when I say our, I'm talking about our as a society rather than individuals, because obviously there's many people with disagreements with that uh, ethical framework. Um, I have gone and lost the topic that we were talking about because I got so focused on thinking about the definition of system and this research we were talking about. <laughs> Someone uh, care to recenter yeah. it. So headspace is what it feels like to not be fronting, whether we even have a headspace or a memory of not fronting, etc. Um, do you want to do you want to go for this one? Oh, okay. And then uh, I sure. might talk about some of my uh, early experiences with that. For us, um, if if you're trans. You probably know that out of anyone you know, you probably have doubted whether you're trans the most. You have felt invalid the most for the longest. You've wondered the most. You thought about it maybe endlessly before you told anyone else. And it's sort of the same thing with being plural. Some of the systems that we know that are just most clearly, distinctly plural. There's there's no question for anyone observing from the outside. Um, doubt it the most. And there's a lot of imposter syndrome there. Often early on, there's a feeling of that you are... I'm sorry, I lost the word. That you are uh, co-opting the experience. And one of the things for us that, that caused that more is that we don't have what is called a headspace. Um, many, many systems have a headspace. Uh, singlets can have that too. You can think of, I don't know, uh, Sherlock's Mind Palace or whatever it was called. Mm -hmm. um, all shapes, sorts, ways. We've got some degree of aphantasia. What is so, aphantasia? Oh, Aphantasia is the inability to, whether partial or completely, uh, use your mind's eye to envision images. People think in different ways. Um, we tend to think mostly as a, well, not a monologue anymore, but the, the inner monologue or dialogue. Some people think in images. I know Ian and Lean think conceptually and they might talk about that some but sort of convert to speech to text to words on the way out and away from it on the way in so our relative inability to envision things means that our head space we don't have one um we have i guess a direction um M's monologue sort of comes from toward like the back of our head and Liz's is sort of like the left. Um, but there's no there's no images, there's no space. Um, even if we try to just think of a table in our mind's eye, we can sort of do it. It's really fuzzy. It sort of warps and changes. It doesn't stay stable. And for a long time, we didn't know anybody was any different. We thought that was the default sort of the, the fish and water thing, the same way that trans girls will think, oh, every guy wants to be a girl or, or that sort of thing. Um, we also don't know what it feels like when we're not fronting. We know what it feels like to front and we know what it feels like to not have been fronting, but not, we have no awareness when we're not fronting. As soon as we start fronting, we have all of the memories that whoever was fronting before that had we will remember, oh, I just felt like I got some friction from M or some friction from Liz. Uh, and why? Sort of an educated guess. But there's sort of nothing beyond that for us. And 
that yeah, that was definitely an invalidating earlier on of the systems we know. We are sort of the most close together in the sense of no memory gaps, don't know what it feels like to, to, to not be fronting. It's, uh, yeah, as we said earlier, it's, it's, it's very different among different systems. And uh, I'm wandering a bit. I'll pass it over to Harley. Hi, yes, it's me, Holly Mist. Um, so, uh, with regard to headspaces, um, yeah, like, like, like Elle was saying, uh, there, there's, there's a lot of different experiences out there, and, um, personally for us, I don't know that we would have had, like, an accessible headspace if, um, so, I guess, content warning here, uh, a little bit of, uh, talking about how rough high school years at an all-boys school were, uh, when you're a trans woman attending one. Um, but things, things, things were pretty rough, and, um, so we ended up with, uh, insomnia and, uh, all sorts of bad stuff happening, but, um, I won't go into that right now. Uh, the point is, we had insomnia, and as a way to sleep, uh, we learned to tell ourselves stories, narratives, and as we got better and better at lulling ourselves to sleep with these, um, we uh, gradually started getting better and better at making that sort of imagery in our heads, to the point where when we fell asleep, if we had constructed enough of a narrative, enough of a world, enough imagery, we would fall into a dream of that thing. And gradually, as we realized we were doing that, we uh, began lucid dreaming. And our headspace today is actually based on something that uh, my headmate Alexia constructed when we were probably about 14 or 15 that has... Uh, somehow persisted a lot, which, uh, <laughs> shout out to persist, uh, a friend, uh, or friends of ours, uh, that's, that's their system name, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's lasted through till today, and, um, that's, that's where we reside when we're not fronting, more or less, is, is in that constructed space, and I think that if we hadn't had that, if Alexia hadn't done that, probably most of what was in our head would be the howling sort of staticky noise that's around outside of that that uh for us we have to pass through that sort of it's it's i guess you could call it a, a hurricane of thought with our headspace in the eye of the hurricane um although our headspace is literal space so that you know space and some planets and stuff it's 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 pretty rad but um one are thing. You, are you that, a constellation um, then? <laughs> I guess you could say that. Um, it's mostly just the 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 planets. I'm not sure that the stars are mostly decoration. I guess you could say, like, like you know, and the and the old like, uh, conceptualizations of of how the solar system worked that some, uh, people had before. Uh, people like Galileo. Um, um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. So that that's that's that's. Uh, oh, I remember now. Uh, sorry, ADHD brain. Um, the so, some guides to working out whether you're plural or not mention that. Um, you should try and talk to your headmates, whether that's aloud or thinking thoughts of them and things like that, and see if you respond. And that, that that's a way to check that you're plural or not. And that is definitely something that works for some people. It's definitely a, a useful tool, and I do recommend trying it if you suspect that you're plural. But one thing that felt really frustrating for me, because I was pretty sure we were, is that they never responded back. And as it turns out, we can't have that sort of verbal communication between us when we're not fronting. 
we communicate mostly in imagery uh, and the occasional like memory of a sound we've heard and things like that. So I guess sometimes if there is sound, it sounds something like Bumblebee from Transformers, sort of consp- composed of snippets of past things that we've heard. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I guess that's to say don't get discouraged if you think you're plural and your headmates aren't responding to you. You might be better off writing things down and coming back to them later on, seeing if you've got a response. Any Anyone else want to talk about that experience? Sure. Um, so I... Um... We also have, have um, since fairly, fairly early on, like late childhood, early teens, have not had much of a visual mind or memory at all, like similar to uh, Emin Liz and L. And we think mostly, or like our, our brain mostly works in terms of sound or in, when we're actually thinking it's it's kind of hard to make an analogy it's, it's conceptual we don't really think of the words or hear the words or see things written down see images when we're trying to figure something out it all kind of like happens uh, almost in the background of our brain and we sort of run through the logic without um, necessarily putting it into words in a way that we could describe to someone and out comes our conclusion and if we want to describe our thought process it's it's quite painstaking to go back through and take all of these like shortcuts and references to ideas that don't really have representation and figure out like okay well what was I actually thinking about here um which I mean in in some ways um seems like it helps with some of the stuff we do uh like I mean our job is um is programming and we tend to like be able to reason very quickly um at other times it's difficult because we'll come out with a and a decision about something and then have a hard time explaining to people like well why why do you think that um so the whole concept of headspace doesn't really make much sense like to me in terms of like how that would work um in in my mind in our mind um but we do have some amount of ability to communicate with each other. Um, we didn't at first. We had a, a sort of a disconnected way of finding each other in that um, when before I figured out that we were trans, I did the majority of the fronting and Lane almost never did. Um, and about a little over a year ago, during transition, she got comfortable enough with our body and presentation and started fronting full time. And, uh, I basically didn't show up at all. Um, and then during that time, she was finding out from people like, about plurality uh, and was able to like sort of tie it back to some of our experiences going right back to teenage years um, and had this sort of a, a wondering like hey like were we plural like are we not now like what's going on um, and it took like a lot of things a lot of little steps along the way to end up with the state we're in now where like usually most days we're both 
spend some amount of time fronting. Um, and somewhere along the way of that, uh, we did start to figure out how to be able to check in with each other and recognize like, oh, well, that's not one of my thoughts. Um, and if we're careful with it, we can think, um, we can ask ourselves a question and then in the way that you kind of do maybe when you're imagining a conversation or thinking about how to explain things to someone, or we do anyway, um, we'll start to recognize that the next thought in the process like matches more up with one headmate or another. And so to start with it, it very much felt like, well, I'm not really talking to my headmate. I'm just thinking and like imagining what they would say. But that pretty much is the same thing in the end. Like it's, if I try to imagine what Lane would think about uh, a question that I'm having, most of the time that's just going to be end up getting me a response from her. Cool. That makes a lot of sense. I don't think I'd heard it from you that way before, so that's that's interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm grinning at the um the cheeky things people are saying in the Discord to each other in our, our backstage space. <laughs> that makes me happy. Um so I want to um I wanted to briefly remind everyone, since it's been about over an hour since we went live, that this program is not only our plurality and gender stream, which is a very special talk show that we have for you all today. This is also a fundraiser for Elle, who's one of our guests just just over here. Um, Elle is a trans feminine, trans woman type person and is seeking some form of gender confirmation surgery. And the community has already received, I believe, over 100 donations. And we're at about, oh, at the start of stream, we're about $8,500, $8,500. And our goal is 13000 period, 500 13, 5? I, I forget. I'm bad with numbers. You'll have to, you'll have to uh, uh, give me the yeah, grace the of the ADHD the brain. <laughs> the goal is 13. So um, we may or may not have alerts that light up when you do that. I might have broken them, but I worked on it for two hours yesterday. <laughs> so um, anyways, um, so yeah, so we are doing sort of a, um, we were doing some definitions. We got excited by some really juicy conversations. Um, I see that we have a, ch a question here that I haven't read yet that the mod posted in the middle of our thing. So I wonder if, if it's a good time for that. Have any of you read that? black text question yet um, uh, I haven't let me just look at that I think this was maybe Jables a minute ago uh, I see uh, I can talk about this a little bit okay I'll read the um, I'll read the question oh no it was okay so Louis L U I Z P S C asks so I still have problems in knowing someone in plural pronouns who is fronting at the time on vo voice calls. And I think also not sure if I can notice the difference in voices of other persons in general without thinking a bit of manner mannerisms. This applies to people on a plural system or not. I was diagnosed with APD on my 19th almost. So maybe this affects it. Um, hey, so. hey, Louise. <laughs> Welcome in. Um, so Louise is, is really cool. I know Louise. We all know Louise, awesome. uh, great. except potentially you. Um, That's okay. we hang out in a discord server together. Um, and I think that it is completely fair to have problems with that, whether you have ASD or APD or not. Um, it's, it's sort of like some plural systems are gonna have really similar voices and and switches that aren't that obvious and one thing that I do 
on Discord especially is I use the little feature that lets you add an emoji to your uh to your user title thing and our system has a defined emoji key uh on our on our Twitter and our pinned tweet and what you can do for us is when we're not invisible uh which we have been recently check the emoji in our profile against the emoji uh key on our Twitter and that's not something that everyone does uh but I think that it's a good idea to like ask if you're not sure and you you like doing doing active listening and and just waiting for somebody else to refer to them by the correct name is good but I think a lot of people aren't going to be offended as long as you just don't assume who's fronting like sometimes some people will get hurt by you not knowing who's fronting I've I've had that happen to me before and I am plural myself you know I'm part of a plural system uh, but yeah, it's it's sort of you have to get to know everyone individually, uh, and even when you know everyone in a plural system and have done for months or years, you're still not always gonna get who's who right. Um, and yeah, so so I think I think the best thing to do is like you're already doing, wait for someone to mention the name or just be like. You know, hey, who's who's fronting right now? Is is often how I'll say it. Mm-hmm. What do what do the rest of y'all think? There's a there's a question here that's sort of related to this that well, I think I think we can I think uh sorry, I think Gem and Liz did actually have a I'll okay. add an answer. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I did. Um, I was going to uh, pull in a few different things, but I'll I'll go to this first. Um, a lot of what Harley said, I guess actually all of what Harley said does apply. Um, it goes a little bit beyond not assuming in terms of, I guess, actionable advice. Actionable advice. Um, one thing that can be difficult is when people do assume um, what you can do instead if you want to prompt that is sometimes you can genuinely just ask something that we've enjoyed a lot is when people confirm so instead of just asking or saying a random name you're like Liz right and that prompts you it gives you the ability to say they're right or they're not rather than having to sort of uh, build up the chutzpah to correct them. And if you say yes, you can just sort of continue, you can continue on. Uh, I had seen somebody asking about the it pronouns, and I figured I would address that too. Okay. Yeah, so Jables asked, I do apologize if this has already been discussed, had to join late, but can you explain the intended meaning of the pronoun it? I always thought that was a slur towards the transgender community, and I wanted to make sure I'm educated so I can be a better ally. The answer there, um, I'll actually draw an analogy to the trans community, wherein the polite thing to do is to use they for somebody if you don't know their pronouns, but if you know that the pronouns are say she and her, and you just use they anyway, that's misgendering, then it's an issue if those aren't their pronouns. Um, In the same way, uh, let's say someone uses neo pronouns and you insist on using they for them, um, that's also an issue. So it is actually something that, especially when we did not know we were plural, and Emily M was the main front. When we were less informed, we got sort of put off by it pronouns in the same way we had mostly seen them used by trolls. We hadn't met someone who used them legitimately. And over time, we met people that did, and we sort of got over it, so to speak, in a similar way that in reverse, we stopped using a lot of casual ableism 
with casual ableism, it started to feel bad coming off our tongue with it. It sort of did the opposite. It started to feel like any other pronoun. Um, M doesn't use anything but she and her. I use the pronouns from all of our system. I use she, her, and it. And Liz uses she and it. It's... We don't necessarily advertise it in anonymous spaces, um, but it is it is something that's there. It's more often used by people that know us better. If someone randomly used it for Liz or me, without knowing, without checking, that would be awful. Um, the intent there matters, the background, the context, all of that matters. But if they know that's your pronoun, then it's great. We make jokes about it various times. Someone says it referring to whatever it may be, whether it's you know, just lewd or a joke or puns or anything like that. And yeah, it's it's a pronoun just like any other, as long as it is contextually appropriate. Um, do you mind if I go back for a second, Jack, to the like passing messages and like realizing yeah, you're trans the, and what's from before? The like headspace thing and the communicating between headmates. Sure. I know that um, a bit later we'll go into bio stuff a bit more, but when M was originally searching for Liz, it came after a lot of exposure to plural systems. And we saw a conversation in a Discord server that basically said, being plural is a lot like being trans. If you tend to hang out with a lot of people that are plural systems, if you've thought about it somewhat regularly, somewhat persistently um, there's a decent chance and that night quite literally um, did I reach out to Liz and yeah it was it was sort of surprising it was the opposite of what happened with Harley's system uh, with the prismatic gals there was an immediate response and it was it was definitely confusing and we had to work through that um, since we don't have a headspace we don't have much background chatter but we can, uh, with purpose, with intent, sort of do some pings, oftentimes vibes from, from the head person that's not fronting. And sort of like Ian mentioned before, there are times that one of us is fronting individually and will notice, oh, that thing I just did, that's, that's not something I would do. That's a Liz thing or that's an M thing, depending on who's fronting. And uh, it, it took a while to figure out what things are for either of us, individually a me thing, and which things... Uh, things aren't i think ian wanted to get something in i'm gonna i'm gonna let them go yeah i wanted to pick up on on uh it and its pronouns because i i do use them for myself um and i definitely like had a moment i was very much brought up um told oh you you'd never like refer to a person as it it's like extremely dehumanizing very rude um but to some extent when i first encountered people using it and its pronouns um that's what made it make a lot of sense to me because the context i was given there was well you know i use it it and it pronouns because i don't feel like a human i don't feel like a person um and there was a period of uh, our life when I was running where uh, I was very depersonalized. Um, I was uh, very much not living um, for myself. I was just sort of getting through my days in order to do uh, what was needed to keep up my uh, responsibilities and obligations and do as much as I could to make things better for other people and I didn't have much regard for myself or experience of myself as a, as a person with any needs or wants or goals beyond what I could do for my family, the people I cared about. Um, so encountering other people who had a similar experience and um, used 
it in its pronouns to show like hey I don't feel like a person and it's not always about being depersonalized for some people it's like um identifying strongly as like uh machinery or like animals or other non-human ways but for me it was very much about being like oh I don't feel like a um a person with drive and entity and it was helpful to um be able to actually like build that into my identity and have other people recognize it that's something that doesn't um that doesn't apply as much now but i do still use the pronouns partly because sometimes it still feels right and partly because I had come into that realization towards the end of being depersonalized and it's still kind of helpful to recognize that that's the state I was in to me. Okay. I want to be mindful of people's needs for bio breaks. So um, the last the last thing we wanted to do since this is the end of one of our episodes is invite um, L to switch to Liz and maybe say hello or whatever else you would like to say. Uh, sure. Hi. Um, you'll probably notice my pitch is a little bit higher than L's was. My residence is a little bit brighter. I have a tendency to speak faster. I'm a little bit more bubbly. I'm trying to speak slower and not do that too much. I'm a little more <laughs> bouncy. Um, since the, I guess, it pronouns of L come from me. It seemed like a good thing to do right toward the end of the episode to uh, to switch. And there's a thing where uh, M identifies as a non-binary woman. Um, I, as much as binariness is even a thing, I do identify as binary as a woman. And there's like something on top of that that we'll probably get into a little bit more later, but it is not unusual in plural systems for different headmates to uh, feel an essential difference, uh, not necessarily fu fully human, so to speak. Um, some more than others, there's, there are systems where, um, for example, uh, Harley Succubus, um, just raised her hands. You couldn't see. She did. Yep. <laughs> um, Peace science. That's a much more uh, essential, strong thing that I'm sure she'll talk about, sort of brain mappy stuff. But for me, like, I've got hands. No, I have hands. All that stuff. I am human. But also, there is an essential feeling of sort of kiddiness that goes through things, and it is it is that that pervades some different aspects of my life that partially lead to the, the it pronouns, um, especially in, in areas that are maybe more, more intimate with partners or, you know, much more trusting situations that tends to, to present, no pun intended, present itself a little bit more. And yeah, I don't know. I wanted to explain that a little bit that since, since Ian went into where their, their it comes from, so to speak. Um, where, where mine does too. I love that. Well, guests, thank you so much. Um, this episode is going to wrap here. If you're joining us live for the stream, we're going to take a 10 minute break and be back with, um, little heavier content. So we're going to get more into biographies, more into the gender and sexuality pieces of plurality. I hope you've enjoyed this bit of Plural 101. I'm sure we could easily fill another hour and a half with some of this basic information, but since we have these wonderful folks here with a lot of lived experience to share, I want to make sure we leave time for that. Um, so I will once more plug that we are doing... Um, this, this stream is also a fundraiser for Elle, who is seeking uh, feminization surgery. Um, I mean, Elle, Liz, and M, truly, actually. Um, so that's that's the the wonderful person you just heard from a moment ago and if you have a couple of funds um, in gratitude for these three lovely systems taking time to 
share about their lives and share their experience and wisdom with us about a topic that is in my uh, limited experience dense and fascinating and also feels vulnerable to talk about at times um, please do consider uh, throwing a couple bucks or a lot of bucks whatever you can afford uh, towards the surgery funds and I will make sure to leave the GoFundMe in the show notes so if people are viewing this later on the YouTube or the Discord or the podcast or wherever you will have an opportunity to contribute um, in the meantime, I'm going to play the channel trailer. I'm going to deafen in Discord. Um, I see a hand raised. Do you want me to answer on stream or do you want me to just type at me? You'll type? You'll talk? I wanted to speak. Oh, I just wanted to yeah. say. Totally. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, to anyone that has donated, is going to. Um, we appreciate it so much. Um, Ian and Lane and Harley System, Prismatic Gals, uh, put it together for us for our birthday. A couple of weeks ago, and it, it just means a lot. And I wanted to say that real quick. I guess I didn't really have much feel on that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything you've been doing with this, Jack. You've really gone above and beyond trying to help us out. And so many of the people we know have been have been really amazing with it. And I'm gonna get teary. I'll go ahead and let go. Aww, very kind. Um. Okay, since this is a podcast episode, I want to invite everyone to say goodbye, and we'll do intros again in 10 minutes. Uh-huh. It was nice being on. Thank you for having us, and thanks to everybody who came for this first part and this uh, first episode of the podcast that we are on, I guess. Uh, first in the sense that this is the first that those of us who are invited are on, not the first that Jack's done, of course. <laughs> Yeah, it's been super fun. Um, I am looking forward to the next one. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, me too. And I already put it in out of order. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's <laughs> totally fine. Um, very cat of you. Speaking of cats, please enjoy Neffer Kitty while we go on a break. <laughs> oh. <laughs>